Jersey City, and J. After another lopsided session on Saturday morning, the outcome of the 12th President's Cup is no longer in doubt, with the Americans now up by a commanding nine points, 11 one half to one half. All that remains is to figure out the final score to determine just how large of a rout we just witnessed. But to get a real sense for the lopsided nature of play at Liberty National, let's consider some other statistics from the first three sessions that put things in proper context. Point one. The largest margin of victory in the President's Cup is in jeopardy. The U.S. won in 2000 at Robert Trent Jones GC outside Washington, D.C., 21 one half to 10 one half. That 11 points is the target that the Americans might be shooting for this weekend. Or it could be 15 points, which is the largest margin of victory by a U.S. squad in a professional match play team competition, when the Americans beat Great Britain in the 1967 Ryder Cup at Champions Golf Club in Houston, 23 one half to 8 one half. Both records might be reasonable to break given the Americans' impressive play thus far. Point two. The Americans' nine-point edge is the largest lead after three sessions ever in the President's Cup or Ryder Cup. The U.S. hasn't led by seven or more points after three sessions in a team competition since the 1975 Ryder Cup at Laurel Valley. Point three. American teams have posted an under-par score in 12 of the 14 matches contested through Saturday morning at Liberty National. Daniel Berger and Brooks Kopka were four over in the Thursday foursomes match, the lone American loss for the week thus far. And Ricky Fowler and Justin Thomas were even par in their Saturday morning alternate shot match, which they have. Otherwise, the Americans have been in red figures in every other contest. Point four. En route to Team USA's 4 one half to one half drubbing in Friday four balls, the five U.S. duos were a collective 30 under. Granted, this includes normal match play concessions, but seriously. The Americans had to count just two bogeys the entire afternoon. How do you expect any other team to keep up? Chris Kandanka TOUR5. The international side has never been more than two up in any match all week, except one. That exception came when Brandon Grace and Louis Estherson won the 17th hole in their Thursday foursomes match against Berger and Kopka to close out their match 3 and 1. Again, that's the only outright victory of the entire week for the internationals. By comparison, the U.S. has won eight matches by at least three holes. Point six. No American pairing has won fewer than three holes in any given match. Contrast that with the fact that in five of the 14 matches, the internationals have won fewer than three holes against their American opponents. Point seven. On the back nine at Liberty National, the Americans have won 32 holes. The internationals have won 15. Perhaps a clear indication of just how well the Americans have been able to close out their matches. Point eight. With a sweep of the four Saturday afternoon four ball matches, the Americans could clinch an overall victory. Yes, it is possible that Sunday singles play would have no bearing on the final outcome of the match. And yes, that would be a first. Related Phil Mickelson breaks Tiger's record for all-time President's Cup points when watch Golf Digest videos.